What up, nerds? Welcome back to <coughs> IB Bio. Okay, so we're moving on from the respiratory system uh, for SL and moving into neurons and synapses into the nervous system. Okay, so these are the things that we are going to be uh, making sure that we understand for today. Okay, all right. So we're gonna go. We're gonna go ahead and go through and get started. Now, when I post this on Classroom, I'm going to post it with um, a number of videos and supplementary stuff to make sure that you guys feel really comfy with what's going on. Okay, so uh, the basic nerve cell is called a neuron. Okay, neurons are made up of three major pieces. So the, I'm going to move myself over here. So the, <clears throat> the neuron is made up of three major pieces. The dendrites are uh, these things right here. These your little branchy bits. These are what are going to be picking up signals from other nerve cells or other places to actually start an electrical signal. Okay, you've got the axon, which is the going to be the main transmitter, the main uh, the main electrical line essentially, main wire sending the signal off to other places. So axon terminals may meet up with dendrites or uh, may meet up with the soma, and the soma is the cell body. It's where you know your normal protein synthesis, DNA replication, all of that good stuff is going to be happening. Okay, and your usually electrical impulses are going to be received here, travel down the axon that way. Okay. All right. So resting potential. So now this is where it actually gets a little bit confusing. So I'm going to we're going to go through. So the way that these signals actually get made is not the way that it gets made with a an actual electrical wire that we are familiar with okay <clears throat> it's a little bit more chemical so neurons generate and conduct electrical signals by pumping positively charged ions sodium and potassium across their membrane this unequal distribution creates different charge across the membrane which is called a membrane potential the resting potential is the difference when a neuron is not firing so usually the inside is more negative the outside is more positive, okay? So there's a difference of 70 millivolts. Maintenance of resting potential is an active process, okay? So resting potential in your neurons, like that, the, the normal electrical charge that your neurons have is an active process. So ATP is being burned, quote unquote burned, um, to maintain that process or to maintain that potential. So normally what happens is you've got this bad boy right here, okay? The sodium potassium pump. All right. Now, the way that it works is that sodium is on the inside. We want to make sure that the sodium gets pumped out. We want to have that imbalance. Okay. So the sodium attaches to a special membrane protein pump that then uh, gets uh, phosphorylated by ATP. Okay. So it drops the phosphorus, which changes its shape and kicks the sodium out. And then potassium comes in. It binds, and when the um, protein then loses the phosphorus, the, or excuse me, the phosphate group, then the potassium gets kicked out, and you maintain that potential. Okay, so it really is. It starts like this. Things come in, so it's just boop, 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 letting things in and out. I wonder if I have a little. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so yeah. So yeah, and these are your ionic gradients. So you're going to have a lot more sodium on the outside, a lot more potassium on the inside, uh, as well as chlorine or chloride ions on the outside. And I'm not sure what that A is, honestly. Really not sure. So it doesn't matter as much. Okay, action potential is when we're actually going to fire it. Okay, so a number of things happen. So depolarization happens first. So when we fire a neuron and we send a signal, okay, depolarization happens. So what happens is that these are uh, channels that are in the membrane. So this is going to be our little sodium potassium pump, the same thing that we saw before, the boop, 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 okay? <coughs> mm, allergies. The green is going to be your potassium channel. So just an open tunnel that is currently closed, and then the sodium channel is currently open. Okay, so depolarization is a sudden change in membrane potential, usually from negative to positive. This is in response to a signal 
initiated by a dendrite. The sodium channels open. That's what happens right here. So they open up, which allows for the sodium ions up here to flood through, changing the potential. You can see the pluses and minuses here. So right now it's slightly more positive outside, slightly more negative inside, and that flips as the sodium comes in. Okay? So it depolarizes. What that does, though, is that that immediately causes the potassium channels to open, and the opposite happens, where the potassium channels open, and that causes this new slightly negative outside, slightly positive inside. It causes the potassium ions to flood outside and flip it again. Okay? And now once those get back to normal, once it gets back to this, so that we've got positive outside, negative inside, both of them shut and our pumps open back up so that we have this very small refractory period. It's very small because ATP is usually, it's real quick, it gets it going. Small refractory period where the things are pumping back in and out to get back to resting potential, okay? Now, that might be a little bit confusing as to uh, how, oh, excuse me. Might be a little bit confusing as to how that actually causes a signal, a single signal. But the way that it works is if we were to think about it like this. Uh, we're to think about it like this. This is our axon. Okay. What happens is that you start depolarizing here, and then immediately you start repolarizing right after it. Well, you've got this little section as this because this is going to be moving. This is going to be moving along this membrane in this direction. Okay, so what starts to happen is that at this little section that is depolarized, it's going to be moving in this direction and it's going to be repolarizing behind it. So this little guy, uh, let's see, let's see if this actually works. This little guy is literally going to be moving all the way down and the signal is going to be shifting as you go okay the signal is going to be moving down the axon until it gets to the next place so it depolarizes now obviously because i'm just using paint the literal whole thing isn't going to rip off and be moving down but you get my point okay so that is how you send a basic signal that's an action potential now, nerve impulses, these are action potentials that are propagated along the axons, okay? So, this is basically what I just talked about, and here it actually gives you a good representation of what I meant, was talking about. So, a nerve impulse happens because depolarization happens, and that depolarization, uh, the voltage change will actually open up the gates nearby that will also then depolarize, whereas behind it, it'll repolarize. And you get this signal moving down the axon, just like I showed you. Okay? So propagation of nerve impulses is the result of local currents that cause each successive part of the axon to reach the threshold potential. Meaning, all right, an action potential of the same magnitude will always occur provided a minimum electrical stimulus. All that means is that there needs to be just enough of a signal, and then boom. It goes, okay? So let's go back to paint. Um, okay, so all that means is that, because I bet you have seen something like this before. All that means is that if your resting potential is here, okay, and it's going along, you need just a little bit extra, just a little bit extra um, voltage, and then bam, blasts up to the depolarization and then very quickly it repolarizes back when the potassium uh, floods back in and then there's that refractory period and then you're back to normal. I'm horrible, I'm horrible at drawing but you see what I mean. Now this should look familiar to you. This should look familiar because that is what we usually see in a heartbeat which is exactly what is, is very similar, okay? What's happening is that in a heartbeat or in a nerve impulse is that you're seeing a slight change into the electrical signal, okay? The voltage goes uh, up just a little bit, then it skyrockets as it depolarizes, the sodium ions flood in, 
the potassium ions flood out as it repolarizes, there's a refractory period, and it's back to normal, okay, back to resting. And that's what we see here, okay? Now, I'm going to let you guys go and watch that video yourself. There's no reason for me to show a video in a video. That'd be silly. Okay, oscilloscope traces. Yep, and this is exactly what I just did. So as you can see, this is a wonderful GIF on BioNinja. So at first, we've got resting potential. Sodium potassium pump is happening. But just enough depolarization happens that, bam, it absolutely explodes. And then repolarization happens right afterwards with the potassium channels opening and the potassium floating out. And then a small refractory period until finally it reaches back to resting potential. Okay. So this is one of the reasons that I tell you guys all the time to go to BioNinja and really use it as a resource because these kinds of GIFs, these kinds of things that they've made are fantastic in getting you to understand the slightly more complex ideas, especially like things like this. Okay, so I'm going to let this play out one more time before we move on to the next piece. But yeah, so this should look just like an EKG uh, or an ECG signal that we've looked, talked about before or that you've probably seen in a hospital or on Grey's Anatomy or whatever it is that you children are watching these days. And there you go. Okay. All right, so myelination. So this is what I was talking about before. So on an axon, some axons, some nerve cells, some neurons, have a myelin sheath. So myelin is this kind of fatty lipid substance that uh, covers the axon. It almost acts like the rubber outside of a wire, except it's a little bit different. So this increases the speed of a uh, of a signal through something called saltatory conduction. Okay. So unmyelinated, nor unmyelinated neurons action potentials propagate sequentially. That means that exactly what I just showed you. They just move along the uh, the axon. <coughs> but in myelinated neurons, the action potentials hop. They kind of go boop, boop, boop in between each of the uh, myelin sheaths. And they go into these little gaps that are called the nodes of Ranvier. That's what I call them. You can call them Ranver if you want to. It doesn't really matter. What this does is that it increases the speed of an electrical conduction. So instead of it going all the way across the membrane, the action potential starts here, and then the actual potential as far as the uh, membrane goes here and then zips through this myelin sheath because it uh, depolarizes all the way through over to here, and then it keeps going. Okay. So not all neurons within the nervous system are uh, insulated like this, and this is, you can see the difference, okay? In the time it takes an unmyelinated neuron to send one signal, a myelinated neuron can send two full signals. That's the difference, okay? Okay. Um, and we are going to, uh, I think I'll do synapses. I'm going to do synapses, uh, neurotransmitters, and extra content in the next video. So for now, thank you guys for watching. Stay cool. Gucci.